Okay, we seem to be recording. I'm your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, Barb. And we're going to review graphing. In particular, we're going to review graphing by plotting points. We're going to graph y equals x. Ooh, this time it's seven. I forgot that the numbers change every time you go out and come back in. So I'll erase the five and write a seven. I haven't recorded for a while. My math lab has gone through a massive update, so I think it's time to make a new review um, video. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're going to graph this line by plotting points. So it's good to have a piece of paper over beside your, your desk. And I'm going to make an X and a Y table. Now I have some students who find it very difficult to believe that you can actually choose a point, but you can. Straight lines, linear functions, have one degree of freedom. That means you get to choose what one of the variables equals. When you have an equation in y equals and then x is over here, it is easy, very easy, to put in numbers for the x and then figure out what y is. Even though it doesn't feel right, it still is correct. So I am going to put in, how about um, negative two? And then I'm going to find out what y is if x equals negative two. y equals negative two plus seven. Uh, negative 2 plus 7 is 5. You can get that out of your calculator. So I'll put a 5 right here. And that means one of the points I'll plot is negative 2, 5. Now let's choose another number for x. How about 0? If y is zero, no, if x is zero, I'm sorry. I'm going to put a zero in for the x, so I have zero plus seven, and that's seven. So my other point now is zero, seven. Now I'm going to plot those two points and get a graph. So let's click here. And I have to tell the uh, I have to tell my math lab what kind of function I want to graph. So I know that I want to graph a straight line. How do I know that? Well, let's go back to the original line right here. Y equals X plus when your variables look like they don't have any exponents, they really do. When you can't see the exponent, the exponent is 1. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Here's what it has to do with bad English. What it means is you are working on a linear function, which in this case is also an equation. So we could just as easily say linear equation. Look at the first two letters 
in the, uh, the first four letters in the word linear. It's lined. You're dealing with a straight line, so I'm going to choose the line tool. I'm also going to read up here. This banner <clears throat> is going to tell me what to do one step at a time. It says click the graph to plot the first point. Well, I'm going to let my first point be negative two, five. So I start at the center and I go two units to the left. And now we have to look at something else. We have to notice that the scale is two. That is, we, we don't go one, two, the scale goes to four, six, eight. Okay, so to go to negative two, negative two is right here, but you want to hover, don't touch, hover. Because this is what'll happen if you actually touch. My math lab is gonna think that I have chosen that as my point, but I haven't. So I'm going to clear. And I'm going to start again. I'm going to click on the line tool. Oh, now I did that. You have to be a little careful here. Um, I think I'll use the mouse. I think that'll be better. Clear, clear, OK. Now I'm going to go over to negative two and not click. And then I'm going to go up to five. Well, here's four. And here's eight. That makes this six. Where's five? Aha, look up here. Oh dear. Well. What's happened? All right. Click the graph. We're going to start again. All right, there. Now, look at these. Look up here. This will tell you what point you're on. Up here, I'm on 2020. That's not where I want to be. So I'm going to come down here to 00. zero. And then I'm going to go two units to the left. Now I'm on negative two zero. And up to seven. This will tell me when I'm at Seven. No, I want to go to five. This will tell me when I'm at five. Look at that. I'm on negative two, five. Click. That tells me in the, in the on the right side of the banner that I'm on two, five, negative two, five. Now I want to be on X is zero. Y is seven. Nope, that's zero nine. This is zero seven. Click. And now I'm happy. I save. And then I really, really hope. See, I need to make that go away. I'm going to check answer. Good job. And we go to the next question. Now we're going to graph the line y equals x. Is it a line? Yes. You don't see an exponent on y, you don't see an exponent on x. So that means our exponents are really one and one. But even if you just say to yourself, well, I don't see an exponent, so this must be a linear equation. So I'll be graphing a straight line. Let's make an X and a Y table. OK, if X is zero. Then Y equals zero. And if X is two. See, I can choose X. I could also just choose Y, but I prefer to choose X. 
because it's a habit. So if I put a two in where X is, then I'll have Y equals two. Now notice this, I have zero and zero, I have two and two. For this function, whatever the X equals, the Y equals. So it has a special name, the identity function. All right, let's graph. I'm going to use a mouse, not my stylus, because my stylus is too dangerous. Okay, click. There's my graph. All right, I'm going to graph a straight line, and this scale is so small. I'm going to have, I'm going to really have to use this side of the grid, okay? Now, I'm being told to click the graph to plot my first point. My first point is going to be zero, zero. Yes, I'm on zero, zero. Click. Now, two, two. Nope, that's two, one. Two, two. Click. Now, let's see. Stay. Come on over here. There you go. I'm going to check my answer. All right, now we have y equals 4 minus 2x. y equals 4 minus 2x. I'm going to create a table, an x and a y table. And even though it may not feel right, and some of my students says, oh, that, no, that's, that can't be right, but it is, I'm going to choose two numbers for x. Easy numbers, small numbers, like one and, well, I could pick two, but I like to have a little distance between them. So how about one and three? Okay, I'm going to let X be one and X be three. Now, if X is one, that's, I'm done with choosing. I don't get to choose anymore. I have chosen numbers for X. Now the equation has to tell me what Y is. Y equals four minus two times one. Well, that's gonna be four minus two, which is two. So if X is one, Y is two. I forgot to actually write my points down as points. Look at that, I'm looking up here, and so I write a zero. No, 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 no. Wrong. One. Two. That will be the first point I plot. Now I have to wait and plot my points together. Just because once I click on one point, that line immediately appears. So, three. Y equals four minus two times three. Y equals four minus six. That's negative two. Excuse me. If X is three, then Y is negative two. Okay, now I use my mouse. If I were more careful, 
I could use a stylus to grab. But unfortunately, I am not that careful. These are all straight lines that we're working on right now. So I'm going to click on the line tool. I'm going to go to one, two. So here I am at the center. I go to one. Oh, that's a two. I go to one. And then I go to two. And that tells me, the yellow banner tells me I'm on one comma two. Click. Okay. Now. Oh, oh, yes. Three. Three, negative two. Here I am. Oh, that's five. Here's three. Three, and I go down to negative two. And that tells me, the yellow banner tells me, I'm on three, negative two. So I click and then I say. And then I pull this over and I check answer. Excellent. Yay for me. OK, now we've got Y equals six X minus three. and Y table. Now I want to look at my grid first. OK, it goes two, four. So I'm going to let my X equal multiples of two. OK. Oh, and this has a nice big grid. OK, so I don't have to worry. If I let X equal two, and how about X equals, well, I could let it equal zero, but how about negative two? Okay. So if Y, e, well, if X is two, then I'll have six times two minus three. So Y will equal 12 minus 3, that's 9. OK, so I'll put a 9 here, and that will give me the point 2, 9, which is also called an ordered pair. It's an ordered pair because order is important. X comes before Y. Always keep the right order. Now, we have y equals 6x minus 3. And this time, I'm going to put a negative 2 in for x. y equals 6 times negative 2 minus 3. That's going to be y equals negative 12 minus three, and that's going to be negative 15. Since most grids are 10 by 10, or I should say 10, 10, 10, 10, that would not fit. But in this grid, it does because we go to 20, negative 20, 20, negative 20. So there's less stress involved. Negative 15. But because the Y coordinates here are odd numbers, I'm still going to have to pay attention right here to the banner. So it will tell me what point I'm on for sure. So this is going to be negative 2, negative 15. And here we go. Going to click on the straight line, click. And then I'm going to find X coordinate 2 and Y coordinate 9. Start at the center, go to 2, and then up to 9. 
and the yellow banner says I'm at 29. Okay, now I'm going to go to negative two and then down to negative 50. Oh, I'm at four, ne negative four, negative. Now I'm at negative two, negative 15. Click, save, check answer. I guess I did it right. Well done. All right, I wanted to now include some fractions because there's a trick to doing these. Here we go, y equals one half x. Plus five. And even college algebra students might have forgotten this, this trick. So here we go. Remember, I can choose one of the variables, either x or y. And I choose to choose x when all of the x's are over here and y is by itself. This is where the ability to choose really helps because I want to eliminate, get rid of the fraction because they're really hard to graph. Sometimes you have to, but it's better to not if there's a way to get around it. So here we go. There are some good numbers I can use for the X in order to eliminate that fraction. Zero, for instance, because one half times zero is zero. And the denominator itself, two, and I'll show you why that works. Two, so here we go. Y equals one half times zero plus five. Well, one half times zero is zero. So that means Y equals five. Put a five over there. Now here's why the two works. Y equals one half times two plus five. It's much easier when you're multiplying to multiply a fraction times a fraction than it is to multiply a fraction times a whole number. So I'm going to turn this whole number two into a fraction. Y equals one over two, one half, times two over one, plus five. Now look what happens. When I multiply two fractions together, I multiply the tops together and the bottoms together. Y equals one times two is two, and two times one is two, plus five. Well, two divided by two is one. Whenever you have identical numbers or letters in a fraction above and below, your answer is one. One plus five is six. So if X is two, Y is six. And now I have two points I can grab. So click. Straight line. I'm going to the point zero. 
five, and to the point two, six, two, six. And then I save and I check my answer. Well done. Yay. And then finally, I think this is almost over. It certainly should be almost over. Now, the reason I chose this equation, x plus y equals negative five, is that this is not in the same form as y equals x plus seven, y equals four minus two x. In all of these equations here on this page, the y and the x have been on different sides of the equal sign. But now they're on the same side of the equal sign. This is called an equation, a linear equation in standard form. Most of the time, whoop, there, most of the time, we use the method I'm about to show you because it's the easiest method. Not always, but most of the time. I make an X and a Y table. Now watch, this is like playing a game of tic-tac-toe. I put a zero here, and I put a zero here. Now notice what I'm doing. I'm saying if X equals zero, what is Y? And then I'm saying if Y equals zero, what is X? So let's start here. If X is zero, then I'll have zero plus y equals negative five. Zero plus y is zero, I mean, is y. Zero times y would be zero, but zero plus y is y. Y equals negative five when x equals zero for this equation. So now, this is one of our points, zero comma negative five. Now, we have x plus y equals negative five. If y is zero, then I'll have x plus zero equals negative five. X plus zero is X. So X equals negative five. Let's erase this mark right there. So I'll put my negative five up here. And that means I'll also plot the point negative five, zero. When X is zero, Y is negative five. When Y is zero, X is negative five. Let's plot the points. Line. My first point is X equals zero. Y equals negative five. Click. Then I go to negative five and I, I double check on the yellow banner. Negative five, zero, and I go click. 
And then I save. And I check answer. Excellent. I love it when it tells me excellent. All right, now we're back to y, y equals x. All right, y is in slope intercept form. That's what we call this form. We also call it function form. That's where you choose the number for x. And you know that I'm going to choose 0 and 2 for x so that I can get rid of that fraction. y equals negative 3 over 2 x plus 4 and an xy table. Um, if x is 0 and if x is 2, I'll be finding y. So y equals negative 3 halves or negative 3 over 2 times 0 plus 4. Well, negative 3 over 2 times 0 is 0. So y equals 4. And now comes the trick with the 2. y equals negative 3 over 2 times the x number 2, which is a whole number. So I'm going to make it into a fraction plus 4. Now I can cross um, um, cross cancel if you know how to do that. But right now I'm concerned about the students who don't know about that. So instead, let us just multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. Now first, 3 over 2 is a negative number, but 2 over 1 is a positive number. Negative times positive is negative. Then I'll multiply 3 times 2, that's 6, over 2 times 1, that's 2, plus 4. So y equals negative 6 over 2 is 3. Negative 3 plus 4. Well, that's going to be positive 1. So here's 1. Now my two points I'm going to plot are 0, 4, and 2, 1. I choose the line tool. I choose zero, oh, oh, yeah, zero, x is zero, y is four, click, and x is two, y is one. Same. I feel insecure about that one. Nope. As long as you look at the yellow banner, you'll do okay. Now, seven is a standard form. Number seven. This is number seven. We're almost done. Number seven. X plus two Y equals six. If this is standard form, and I'll tell you the trick here. If the number in front of X and the number in front of Y, if they go evenly or divide evenly into six, then this is definitely the correct method. 
the tic-tac-toe method. Zero and zero. See, before when we did that, Ah, here. Before when we did that, we had invisible ones in front of the X and in front of the Y. We also had invisible ones here. But what I care about right now, of course, that's the most important thing to make sure we're really graphing lines. But the invisible ones in front will both go evenly into negative five. So, that makes this tic-tac-toe method the correct method. Okay, now if X is zero, we'll have zero <clears throat> plus two Y equals six, which means two Y equals six. I divide both sides by two, y equals 3. Is that easy or is that easy? Now, start over. Start over from the beginning. x plus 2y equals 6. If y is 0, then we'll have x plus two times zero equals six. Two times zero is zero. So X equals six. And the points we're going to plot are zero, three, and six, zero. We come over here, we click, we click, and we plot zero, three, and six, zero. This gives us the intercepts. Notice that this is the y intercept because. That's where the line crosses the y-axis. And this is the x-intercept, where the line crosses the x-axis. We're going to be using this trick a lot when we're asked to find the intercepts. Stay. Check answer. Fantastic! One more, the last one. Or was that the last one? Says I have score of 100. And now save has appeared. So I'm going to save. Hello. And I guess I did all of them. Now I can review what I did. Suppose I missed one or two. I can go back and I can work on them. And I can keep doing that, okay? So that you can get a score of 100. So I wanted to show you this. There I am. I wanted to show you this and how much fun graphing can really be, how easy it can really be. And what we've done this time is we have graphed by plotting points. See you next time. Bye-bye.